Welcome to Incompetent Sports Talk on with Mike Raven and Jake Burgers. I'm Alex Salzman. On this edition, we have a bracket with the 16 best sports movies of all time, and we're going to work it out until we get to the Final Four and eventually our champion to determine what the best sports movie of all time is. Our field, Hoosiers, Bad News Bears, Rudy, Caddyshack, Field of Dreams, Blue Chips, The Natural, Sandlot, Hoop Dreams, Million Dollar Baby, Raging Bull, The Hustler, Rocky, Major League, Remember the Titans, and Bull Durham. So let's so. start off in this region right up here. Hoosiers, the one seed, taking on the four seed, Bad News Bears. Hoosiers, the immortal 1986 classic. Gene Hackman stars as Norman Dale. Barbara Hershey, Dennis Hopper, also in this one, the classic basketball film, and the Bad News Bears. Walter Matthau plays this baseball coach who's a drunk, but yet he comes together, tries to coach this team of misfits. Classic ending to this movie, actually classic ending to both of these movies. I'm going to give my pick to Hoosiers. I think Hoosiers is one of those movies that it is just Americana. It has a lot of elements that make sports movies great. It has the redemptive story. Gene Hackman has this shady past. He gets his chance at glory. You got Jimmy Chitwood. He has a backstory. He doesn't play basketball. He comes, leads this team to glory. You got uh, Dennis Hopper, who's the alcoholic father and the assistant coach. He comes in. He has his moment of glory. And it's the ultimate underdog story. Hoosiers, this team, it's the small town, high school, Hickory, they make it to the state title game, and there's a big dramatic finish at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So I give my pick to Hoosiers. Jake, who do you like, Hoosiers or Bad News Bears? I think you dissected this one a little too much. I think Hoosiers <laughs> in a landslide, I think that's the biggest mismatch on this board. Uh, Bad News Bears, I did enjoy the movie. It's a very funny yeah. movie. Uh, I like the remake, too. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton was good yeah. in that. I, it's a good story, but Hoosiers, uh, it, one of the most classic Base or uh, movies of all time, sports mm -hmm. or any field, uh, you got to have that great basketball movie. Yeah, there. I just had to talk up Hoosiers. It's one of my oh, favorite yeah. movies okay. of all time. You so. know, it kind of reminds me of a certain place you're going to be in a couple weeks, Humboldt, Iowa, <laughs> and the H is just coming yes, out here with the H right. on the jacket, the Hoosiers. <laughs> Humboldt, Iowa. Maybe Alex Salzman will get his own version of Hoosiers I'm hoping, in the man. coming years in Humboldt, <laughs> Iowa. But yeah, I agree with what you, what you had to say, Alex. I mean, Bad News Bears is a good movie, but I think Hoosiers uh, has to take this one in the uh, first round. So it's unanimous. We've yet to see a four ever beat a one. That's in, right. In it, could, it could maybe <laughs> happen. So the process we're going to go on and now, if there's a one-one tie, that third person will decide the tie, and we will then go on and advance that movie. So all I have to do is get two out of three votes to advance on. Rudy, the two seed, the classic story, Notre Dame, Rudy, Rudiger, then number three, Caddyshack, one of the great comedies of all time. Mike, basically it's down to college football and golf. Who are you taking? No, no, well, the thing that's hard about this is Caddyshack, you know, you've got the humor, the classic humor, the funny, the funniness. And then in Rudy, you've got this serious themes about coming from nothing, getting to the pinnacle of, at the time, college football in Notre Dame. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the Rudy story. So I'll admit I'm a little more of a serious guy. I'm a little more of a sentimentalist. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Rudy uh, just slightly over Caddyshack. Uh, final, final shot in the last 30 seconds. Jake. I agree with Mike. This is a very interesting matchup because you have the different uh, types yeah. of genres that these movies are. You have comedy and you have the serious movie in Rudy. Mm -hmm. We actually got a chance to meet Rudy a few years back when he came to Iowa. That was a cool experience. Rudy's always been one of my favorite movies. I think I'm going to take that over Caddyshack. I'm also going to go with Rudy. So many great lines, so many great scenes oh, in this movie. So hard to see Caddyshack going off the board already. Oh, but, I mean, that's, that's the, we're in a tough field. You're, yeah. We're going to make a lot of tough decisions. <laughs> What's your favorite scene in Rudy? There's so many great scenes. I think mine... It isn't one that always gets talked about. I love the locker room speech at the very end. Dan Devine, he just gets into the locker room. You're in maybe one of the most beautiful locker rooms in all of college football, and all he says is, no one, I mean no one, comes into our house and pushes us around. I just love that. I love that speech. How about you guys? There are a lot of different yeah. – it's hard for me to pick a favorite, but one that sticks out to me, and again this comes to me being a sentimentalist, is when he walks into the, the factory and sh shows his dad mm -hmm. the letter and says, yeah. look at this, and he goes over, his dad goes over to the speaker and says, my son got into Notre Dame, and everybody's so yeah. excited because it's the hardworking blue-collar kid who came from nothing and got to – go to Notre Dame for an education, and then eventually play in a football game. Mm -hmm. I was going with that as well. It was just <laughs> great to see his dad yeah. in that movie, how proud he was, and how proud he was to announce that to all of his coworkers. Yeah. That scene right there was probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Now an issue matchup here, Field of Dreams. We're in Iowa, so I might be a little biased to this one. Kevin Costner, the classic, has to go build a field in his backyard. 
Blue Chips coming as the four seed. Blue Chips is a movie, even though it was made in 1994, it doesn't get talked a lot about anymore, but a great performance by Nick Nolte is this Bobby uh, Knight-like coach tries to go in and he pays players or has boosters pay players and he kind of turns a blind eye. So I think it's very relevant now to great cameos. I think Bob Knight, Jim Beheim make cameos. Also Shaquille O'Neal plays one of the players on his team. As much as I love Blue Chips, Field of Dreams is classic. And, and I think every time I watch this movie, it's like I want to go out and, and play catch with my dad. It's that kind of movie. It almost makes me cry. It's that good. Very sentimental. I love Field of Dreams. So I'm going to pick Field of Dreams. Jake, which, which one are you going to go with here? Well, yeah, Blue Chips did have a lot of big names in it. Uh, you talk about uh, Penny Hardaway mm -hmm. and Shaquille O'Neal were in that. Uh, also, a former Iowa coach, George Raveling, was in the scene. Mm -hmm. I don't think he actually had a line in the scene, but he was in there. But Field of Dreams for me, especially growing up in Iowa, loving mm -hmm. baseball, uh, that last scene when uh, he asks his dad if he wants to have a catch, that, that's just a touching scene. The whole, mm -hmm. mo the whole movie's just great. And that's probably my favorite to win it all right now. So I think mm -hmm. a Field of Dreams goes. Past well, on my weekends, I go out to the baseball field in the middle of the cornfield all over the state <laughs> of Iowa. And I, I watch the corn grow because that's what we do here yeah. at the University of Iowa <laughs> for you incoming freshmen next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I'm going to stick with the theme of the Midwest. We've seen Hoosiers and yeah. Rudy win. And that's I'm going to have to go right, with yeah. Field of Dreams in the Midwest uh, sweeping the board so far. So I'm going to write down Field of Dreams. Pen, penmanship's not good. The Natural, the two seed, this is a movie that just has a ton of classic scenes, whether it's Robert Redford at the very end, uh, hitting the ball into the light. There's just so many great scenes. And then you got the Sandlot sneaking into the three seed, a movie that we all loved when we were young, but it still makes us laugh today. So many classic scenes in this one, so many classic lines. This one makes you feel like a kid. Mike, Natural or Sandlot, we got two baseball movies here. I know, it's tough. I'm going to go with The Natural. I'm a big fan of Robert Redford, and uh, he just does a great job in so many movies. Mm -hmm. But this movie, again, the little, a little more serious, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to stick with that. And The Sandlot, again, this is one of the, it's the tough choices that tough. we have to make. Yeah. I can't believe Caddyshack's already off the board, <laughs> because I like Caddyshack yeah. more than a few movies on this side, but it's, it's all about the matchups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to give The sand, or excuse me, uh, the Natural the slight edge over the Sandlot. Jake. Well, we haven't had a whole lot of disagreement so far, but I think we're going to have some this time. Ooh, good. The Natural, it's a classic movie. There's a lot of things to like about it. It's serious. It's an all-time classic, mm -hmm. no doubt. But also, if you have read the book, I think it takes away from watching the movie a little mm -hmm. bit, which I have read the book. Sandlot, it, it's another classic movie. It's really lighthearted, but it's still a classic movie. It talks mm -hmm. about bringing uh, kids together and remembering mm -hmm. your childhood. And plus, Benny the Jet grows up to be a... L.A. Dodgers, so of course I have to take the Sandlot. I'm, I'm taking the Sandlot over the Natural. So I guess I have to cast, cast the tiebreaker here. I think the Natural has some of the best scenes in movie history. The end is great. You got the scene where he carves Wonder Boy into the bat. The score, uh, I think by Thomas Newman, is fantastic. But as far as a whole movie goes, I like The Sandlot a little more. It's one of the funniest sports movies of all times. It's one of those ones I loved as a kid and I can still go Baby back to Ruth. today and, and <laughs> laugh. And I even find different parts of it funny now than compared to when I was younger. So I'm gonna have to go with The Sandlot. Oh, goodbye, my love. Uh, tough Off to knock board. out the natural because I though. love the natural. So now let's go over to the other side of the bracket. We'll start up at the top. We have Hoop Dreams, the one seed taking on the four seed. Million Dollar Baby, Hoop Dreams, the documentary from 1994. Million Dollar Baby, the best picture winner from earlier last decade. Jake, which one of these do you like to go with here? Well, I know a lot of people out there have not seen Hoop Dreams. It's a great documentary that I have actually not seen either. So, but uh, from what I've heard and the research that I've done on it, it sounds like an incredible movie. Uh, really compelling stuff. I really want to see it now, especially when I hear Alex talk about it. Yeah. I know he puts it at number one, so Million Dollar Baby is a, good, is, it's a great movie with a great cast, but I'll, I'll go with Hoop Dreams. Mike. Yeah, I'm gonna. I am one of the few Hillary Swank fans out there, so I'm gonna go with uh, <laughs> Million Dollar Baby uh, in a close one against Hoop Dreams. Funny because Clint Eastwood is one of my all-time favorite directors. He's one of my all-time favorite actors. Morgan Freeman, Hillary Swank. This is a great cast, but. I have the DVD, if anybody wants to borrow it. Hoop Dreams is one of the great movies I've ever seen in my life. It's a documentary. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's almost three hours long, but it covers almost four years of these two inner city kids in Chicago. It's a slice of like, unlike almost anything I've ever seen. You know it's real. Everything that unfolds, unfold how it happened 
in their life. So the stakes are really high, the drama is there, and you just love to watch these kids try to get their dream, get to the NBA, get to college to play basketball, give them some hope in their life. I mean, it's a terrific story. So I'm gonna go Hoop Dreams. Roger Ebert, the respected film critic, said it was the best film of the 1990s, and I'm gonna have to go with Hoop Dreams there. Raging Bull, some people say Robert De Niro's performance is among the best in the history of motion picture in the film Raging Bull. And The Hustler, yes, I do think pool is a sport, so I included this one. This one has one of the great casts, I think, of all time. You got uh, Paul Newman, who plays The Hustler in this one. You got George C. Scott, who's been in so many great roles. Among them, General George S. Patton in the movie Patton. He plays a great character in this one. You got Jackie Gleason as Minnesota Fats. This is a tough one for me. I'm going to say Raging Bull, though. Raging Bull is one of those movies where you don't like Robert Dino's character. He's a very unlikable person, but the way it captures the brutality of the sport of boxing, I don't think any other boxing movie does it, and the fighting scenes are really impressive. I think Martin Scorsese is one of the great directors of all time, too. One of Scorsese's finest films. I'm going to go with Raging Bull in this one, Mike. Yeah, the boxing movies on this side, I think, are going to be making a real push for, <laughs> the, uh, for the next couple rounds. So I'm going to go with Raging Bull as well. Jake. Raging Bold for Robert De Niro's performance. It is a little darker than a lot mm -hmm. of these movies, not as uplifting as some of these movies. Uh, Robert De Niro, for this movie, put on 60 pounds just mm -hmm. to fit the part. Uh, what he did in that movie was just incredible. Uh, you have to go with Raging Bull. Some people say it's the greatest sports movie of all time. Mm -hmm. Two seed here, it's going to be a tough matchup. Yeah, and the thing about Raging Bull 2, in a lot of movies it seems like the sport the, the action is really what sets it apart. But in this one, it's just the dynamic performance by De Niro and all the stuff in his home life. It's one of those movies where it seems like almost every one of these movies, you really rally behind the main character. But this one, even though he succeeds, he becomes a champion. You're not really rooting for him, but yet you're still always interested because of just the amazing performance by De Niro. So we go down to this uh, region down here. We got Rocky. Best Picture winner, 1976. We all know about Rocket, we've all seen it. Taking on Major League, the four seed, one of the great uh, baseball comedies. A lot of quotable lines in that one. Charlie Sheen, who has been in the news a lot lately, he's in this one. Jake, Rocky, or Major League? I'm gonna be in the minority of this. I, I, I've seen the Rocky movies and I like the Rocky movies, but I don't love the Rocky mm -hmm. movies. Major League is one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, mm -hmm. Charlie Sheen in it is great. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Taylor, I love his character <laughs> in this. Yeah. Uh, there's just so many good characters in Major League. It's a really well put together comedy. And uh, the baseball playing is, it's all right. It gets mm -hmm. by, but the movie on the whole is just incredible. So I'm, I'm going with a four seed over a one seed here. I'm going Major League over Rocky. Big upset. I, and I love Bob Euchre in this movie, too. He's maybe yeah. the reason to see this movie. Tom Berenger, also good. Mike, Rocky, or are you going to go with the upset Ro in Major League? The movie Rocky, was, the thing that makes Rocky special is it was just an inspiration mm -hmm. to generations of young people yeah. who wanted to go out and be like Rocky. And I think that's what makes that movie so appealing. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at all these sorts of stories and people, they talk about heroes and the idea of Rocky really translate uh, throughout so, so many decades, so much time. So I'm going to go with Rocky uh, over Major League in a close mm -hmm. one. I guess I have the tiebreaker here. I'm going to go with Rocky. I'm not a huge fan of the sequels, but the first one, there's a reason why it spawned so many Major sequels because it's so here, good. <laughs> you know, Rocky was the underdog in the first movie. He was the favorite here, and I'll have Rocky advancing on to the next round.